Hey what's guys Unleash here today and yep we're back with once again another video. So in today's video we're going to be talking about quite an interesting topic I would say. So as you've seen in the title of this video we're going to be talking about how to fix Sonic the Hedgehog. Now you might be wondering what do I mean by this? Well I just mean by fixing the franchise like terms of game releases and all that good stuff. So without any further ado ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and let's discuss how to fix sonic the hedgehog right step number one don't rush games i think it's a pretty obvious solution for how to fix him well one solution anyways because because if games are rushed failures are bound to happen let's look at all the past sonic games that have been rushed sonic 06 that was rushed look what happened to it sonic forces that was rushed look what happened to it if you're going to rush games, they do it like Sonic Rush. I'm sorry, that was a terrible joke. Um, carrying on. Sonic is at really in the position to be having more failures right now. Especially after the movie. And all those new fans are going to be wanting something good and fresh from the Sonic the Hedgehog series. And if we get more failures, they're just going to go away. Force was already rated mediocre. And if we're just going to top that with a rushed and bad game, it ain't going to end well, is it? Fans are going to be leaving, and Sonic is going to fall to the bottom. Right, the next solution is to not leave the back catalogue of Sonic games in the past. I think you all know what I mean by this. <clears throat> Port Sonic Unleashed! Right, I think, I think we're done for the video now. That's how to fix Sonic the Hedgehog. Port Sonic Unleashed. Right, hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time. Peace! Only joking, only joking. Right, Sega, you do need to put your back catalog of Sonic games. There are a lot of gems back there, like Sonic Heroes. When has that had a port? Like, never. Sonic Unleashed. When has that ever had a port? Never. Port Sonic the handheld Sonic games. Advance. Rush. Where are those ports? I don't know. Sega has been leaving them in the past, and that is a problem. Because a lot of people have been telling Sega to port them. And, I can't even deny, Sega definitely seemed to be improving. Because we're getting Sonic Colors Ultimate. We're getting Sonic Origins. All those are either ports, well not even ports actually. They're remasters of original games, which is good. I don't think that Sega are improving in terms of porting, as we've clearly been seeing. So, props to you Sega. But don't, don't leave it with Colors Ultimate, please. We need Unleashed Ultimate, please. And Heroes Ultimate. Advanced Trilogy. A rush duology. Chucking Colors DS as well. I don't know. Just port your back catalog of games, Sega. Keep it up. Right. Next solution is to create or revive a Sonic spin off series that isn't a kart racer. I think we can all agree that car racing for the Sonic spin off series is getting kind of boring now, let's be honest. We need a different spin off series now. It's getting kind of old. Like, even if you can't create a brand new one, at least revive an old one. Like, bring back Riders, bring back Rush, Advance. There's all these great spin-off series that has been left in the dust because of one single bad game. Because of reviews and critics. But, why should we get more spin-off series? Well, it means more releases for Sonic. That's always good. That means avoiding droughts of Sonic games. Like, from the time after Team Sonic Racing. That was a very depressing period of time for the Sonic series, I must say. Also, with more games, means more to be excited for. Fans will actually be excited for Sonic. It's a miracle. And then with these different playstyles for Sonic in the spin-off series, it means people can adjust to people's different preferences for Sonic, catering to a wider audience. More people will be interested in Sonic. Right, the next solution is to outsource Sonic to different developers. Right now, the only real other developer other than Sonic Team is Sumo Digital, and they do the kart racing series. I can't understand why Sega doesn't want to do that anymore because of Big Red Button and Sonic Boom but let me just say something real quick to you Sega It was your own fault Sonic Boom failed! You interfered with development and you screwed it all up! It wasn't Big Red Button's fault, it was your fault Sega! Ahem <clears throat> Right, uh, carrying on Why should we have more developers for Sonic? Well it means that we can lay the heat off Sonic Team so they can focus on the main title without any interruptions make it the best it can be. An example of this, Sonic 06 and Sonic and the Secret Rings. Sonic Team was split 
to make the two different games, which proved to be fatal, as both games sucked, so, yeah. Anyways, next solution is to be ambitious. Sonic cannot be the same forever. Sonic will definitely get boring, and people will move on. So you need to be way more ambitious with Sonic nowadays. Bring in more stuff. Don't just stick to one boost gameplay stuff for one decade. Please don't do that. I'm begging you. We've had one decade of boost already. I'm, get I'm getting kind of tired of it too. We want an adventure or something brand new and fresh, which it does seem like they're doing. If the leaks are true, of course, for Sonic Rangers. An open world game? That is ambitious for Sonic. It's great. People must be interested in Sonic again. It's a goddamn miracle. Almost as if Sega are actually improving on Sonic. They're trying to fix the Sonic the Hedgehog series. God damn it, Sega. Why am I making this video if you're doing it? I don't know, but let's go on anyways. Right, next point. And Sega has been working very good at this, I must say. Don't make games only aimed at kids. Make it for everyone. Now, of course, I'm not saying go to the length of Shadow the Hedgehog and just make it filled with words like Damn. Don't go to the lengths of that. That that was that was too far. And nobody liked that. Well, a small minority liked that. But most of us hated it. Well, I don't hate Shadow of the Hedgehog, honestly. I think it's overhated. Maybe a bit underrated. I like it. The I like the game, to be honest. But the story is something else. Yeah, I don't play Shadow of the Hedgehog for the story. I can tell you that much. If they keep making games aimed at kids, people are already getting bored of that already. It's not good. They need to make Sonic suitable to a wider audience. Kids aren't stupid, Sega. Challenge will stimulate the brains and keep them interested and entertained. And, even better, will also keep all the fans hooked. See, killing two birds with one sto- They're not trying to kill them. What? No, never mind, forget, forget I said that. Uh, um, carrying on. Uh, uh, what the hell is wrong with me? Right, the next solution is to make interesting stories again. This is very important to the Sonic the Hedgehog series. It's what sets Sonic apart from other franchises, like Mario. His stories were pathetic back in the day, but what did Sonic do? He changed all that, and gave stories like Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Co. 6, well, that was kind of a complex and Strange stories from areas. It was still way more complex and still a good story. In theory. I mean, the story was still there, that's my point. Because nowadays in Sonic games, while stories have definitely been getting better, they're still not as great as they used to be. There are no memorable moments in the stories anymore, like in the 2000s. We had stuff like, what you see is what you get. Just a guy that loves adventure. And nowadays we just have things like, <laughs> Baldy McNose here. <laughs> Gotta remember that one. That, I wasn't trying to impersonate Sonic there, just so you know. I can do a way better Sonic impression. Trust me. So yeah, the point I'm trying to make here is an extended message anymore. I thought that was really charming in Sonic games where there's like a message at the end of the game. Like in Sonic Unleashed, it's about friendship. And then Sonic Adventure 2, it's about sacrifices. Is this something that always ends the Sonic stories in the 2000s, which... Man, I really miss... Uh, I really do. And also miss memorable characters. We don't have that nowadays. We just have... Zavok. Infinite. Very, very memorable, I can already tell you. Where are the characters like Shadow? Silver? Jet the Hawk? Where are all these types of characters gone? They're not here anymore, they're just... Whoosh! Gone! Thanos snapped! Or even better... Chaos controls out of you, they're just gone. And it's really annoying. Please, Sega, make interesting characters again. I'm begging you. Right, next solution is sort of linking to the previous one about making interesting stories again. And that is to change characters' personalities to be akin to the adventure and Dark Age games. This is one crucial element that was lost between the transition between the Dark Age and Meta Era. I'm sorry for people who don't like the Meta Era, I'm just. This is what people call it nowadays, and... You know, I should make a video on that sometime. Oh, we need to come up with a better name for the meta era, honestly. But yeah, carrying on. Characters' personalities really were ruined. Like, colours didn't completely ruin them. I think Tails and Sonic were alright in there. 
Sonic said there's courageousness somewhat. There was a bit of a annoying little brat with his incredibly funny jokes. But then over time, the character's personalities really seem to just disappear. Lost World Tales. What the hell happened there? Sonic Forces Tales. God damn it, why do you keep going backwards? And then, honestly, I think Sonic has been alright. And I think it's gone to the point where the most consistent Sonic character is the Eggman. It's what he is, he is the Eggman. Okay, I'll stop. Yeah, Eggman really is the only consistent character in this series. I should make a video on that too. But yeah, make characters' personalities good again. Don't just make them cracking jokes and all that. Basically, use Sonic Forces' personalities except for Tails. And then, just expand on them and make them great again. Easy as that. The next solution is to market the games well. Don't know what you just did for TSR and just put the trailer where the movie was on in the cinema. Even though the game came out one year prior. Because you know you effed up with that Sega. You say you screwed that up. Why? TSI is a great game. You just let it die. Why did you just leave it to die? Come on. Like seriously. Don't just leave the games to die. That's just, that's just the wrong thing to do. Add additional content if you must. If it's not already there. DLC. We have no DLC anymore in these games. Well, meaningful DLC anyways. Super Sonic does not count as DLC. I'm sorry. Right. Final, final solution here. And that is to have faith in Sonic again. Sega, I've noticed that they seem to be losing faith in Sonic a lot. Because they give Sonic Team lower budgets now. We need Sonic Team to have bigger budgets so they can make great games. We want CGI in the Sonic games again. We want them to make great games that will keep people coming back. Sonic games really lack this nowadays. It's just really sad to see. Sega, I do think the movie has changed your mind a bit about Sonic and seeing that Sonic can print that money. But I think to go to further extents, it gives Sonic Team the bigger budgets that they desperately need to make great games again and everybody will be happy. Anyways, that just about wraps it up for today's video. So, do you agree with my points here? Is this how you would think that Sonic the Hedgehog would be fixed? And if you don't agree with me or want to add something, let me know down below. I'd love to see what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, especially that last one. And hope to see you next time. Peace.